can't imagine of worst way to lose someone that I loved that they are in the fire and won't escape and knowing that burning in the fire is just a terror you look at everything the iron fridge lamp clock radio all of these things will be collected as evidence so we can submit them for further test Sharon worried that maybe the fire might be all her fault um, um I think it's all my fault I think I left the iron in our bedroom that morning on Yes, the iron was on high, but there was nothing wrong with the iron. All the safety features were entered. The iron did not start the fire. At the end of the day, I have no ignition sources. I have nothing that will create the fire that I will find. The investigators are unable to determine what ignites the deadly blaze. And what is even more troubling is that Charles died in bed. It looks very strange that as a young healthy man that he hadn't gotten up from the bed tried to escape the room or tried to open up the window when the medical examiner finished with Charles body autopsy he presented the investigators with astonished findings we found no carbon dioxide in his blood no smoke in his airways so he actually died before the fire breaks out if neither fire nor smoke killed Charles, how did he die? There is a good reason why Charles did not try to escape from his burning bedroom. Charles actually died before the fire started. Medical examiner was able to determine that there wasn't any medical cause like heart attack or some diseases that was previously unknown. The investigators also rule out suicide or accident drug overdose. With suicide and natural cause ruled out, it's looking more and more to me that Charles has been murdered. But why does anyone want him dead? Did Charles have a secret that let him be killed? No one can think of any reason why someone would want Charles dead until the police speak to his widow Sharon. Sharon says there is one person who hated Charles and wanted to make his life a living hell, his ex-wife Helen. She just did not want to let him go. She was so jealous that we were so happy together. By all counts, that marriage ended up very badly. Helen is now looking at this relationship between her ex-husband and Sharon. She gets everything she wants. She is living in a house that Helen should be living in. She is wearing the clothes jewelry Helen should be wearing. She is living this exaggeration perfect life. And this could drive someone to act out because of pure rage, jealous, feeling of hopelessness. After their divorce, there is so much anger, jealous and agony. You don't know what the breaking point of human being is to do something drastic. Definitely is someone to look at and talk to. Police bring Helen for questioning. She acknowledges that there was friction between her and Charles, but she says it with a good reason. She and Charles were still married when Charles started sleeping with Sharon. Everyone thinks that she is a little sweet girl, but when you got to know her, she is as dangerous as snake. She stole my man in front of me. But anything between me and Charles 
is long gone. Helen and her second husband has just had a new baby recently. Her report to police was that she had been at home the day Charles died. Helen told the police that if they want to find out why child Charles died, they should ask his wife Sharon. She says Sharon is nothing like that sweet little girl she appears to be. She is a green snake in a green grass.